Hi. So this is uh, the second part under the topic payload. And today I will talk about payload sensor. So now let's look at the technology involved in making workable sensor system. Uh, to observe a subject on the ground, a spacecraft sensor must look at it, see it, convert it and process it. Okay. Uh, before spacecraft sensor can see the subject, they must first point at it. Sensor scanning mechanism can vary widely in complexity. Some sensors simply stare at the ground and use the spacecraft on motion over the earth to scan area beneath it. In this case, Information collection is limited by the field of view of the sensor. Field of view or FOV is the angular width that a sensor can see. Many spacecraft use mirrors to move the image in a sweeping pattern to look at object of interest. The speed at which this motion takes place is called the scan rate. The second important function of sensor system is to collect incident radiation and focus it on a detector. We use two important parameters to describe how the sensor or telescope uh, works, focal length and aperture. Okay, focal length FL is the distance from the lens used. The aperture uh, gathers light either by refraction using ordinary lens or by reflection using a mirror. Camera and our eyes rely on refraction. Large telescopes such as Hubble satellite use reflection. For telescope, we, we are most interested in the magnification factor. It gives us which is how close are things made to look that are far away. So we define magnification as the ratio ratio of a focal length to height or detector radius to the ground image radius. Realize that twice of the grand image uh, ground image radius RG give us the sensor SWOT width. Knowing the focal length and detector radius, we can also determine the sensor field of view or FOV field of view as uh, equation show here. This is an uh, example of Carto SAT showing the different distance of FOV due to the different angle of focus. The next image is uh, Sentinel-5. Sentinel-5 is operating in another looking uh, push broom mode from sun synchronous low of orbit. The wide across track field of view of 108 degree provide a wide swath of about 2670 km on Earth and thus almost globally allow for daily coverage of the Earth's surface. Uh, the size of aperture and the wavelength of radiation we are interested in determine the smallest object we can see, the resolution. If we have perfect eyesight, our vision is 20-20. This measurement means that at about 6.1 meter, we can read all letters on specific line of an eye chart. For optical system like camera and telescope, we express the angular resolution theta as an angle. Uh, that is function of wavelength and aperture diameter D. This equation says the smallest angle we can detect between points is directly proportional to the wavelength we select and indirectly proportional to the size of the lens aperture we use. From the figure on the right side, we determine the smallest linear dimension of our instrument can dis distinguish at a given distance by multiplying the angular resolution by two times the distance from the sensor to the object. Note that resolution tells us the smallest detectable object, so the smaller the resolution, the better.
there are two types of the sensor, passive and active. The passive sensor may measure reflected sunlight em emitted from the sun. When the sun shines, passive sensor measure this energy. Most passive systems used in remote sensing application operate in the visible infrared, thermal infrared and microwave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Active sensor have its own source of light or illumination. In particular, it actively sends a pulse and measure the backscatter reflected back to the sensor. So, example of the active sensor is a radar and sonar. Okay, this chart summarizes the type of sensor now used or being developed in remote sensing. It is expected that some new type of sensor will be developed in future. Each active and passive sensor is divided further into non-scanning and scanning system. A sensor classified as a combination of passive, non-scanning and non-imaging method is a type of profile recorder, for example, a microwave radiometer. A sensor classified as passive, non-scanning and imaging method is a camera such as an aerial survey camera or a space camera, for example, on board the Russian Cosmos satellite. Sensors classified as a combination of passive, scanning and imaging are classified further into image plane scanning sensors such as TV cameras and solid state scanners and object plane scanning sensors such as smart spectral scanner and scanning microwave radiometer. The most popular sensor used in remote sensing are the camera, solid state scanner such as uh, CCD or charge coupled device image, the multispectral scanner and in the future the passive synthetic aperture radar. Laser sensors have recently begun to be used uh, more frequently for monitoring air pollution by laser spectrometers and for measurement of distance by laser altimeter. And optical sensors are characterized specific by spectral, radiometry and geometric performance. This figure summarizes the related element, element for the three characteristics of the sen optical sensor. And there are many kinds of spectral measurement device. For example, spectroscope for human eye observation of the spectrum, spectrometer to record spectral reflectance, monochromometer to read a single narrow band, spectrophotometer for photometry, spectral radiometer for measurement of spectral radiation and others. However, in this section, only optical spectrometer are of interest. The figures show a classification of spectrometers, which are divided mainly into dispersing spectrometers and interference spectrometers. The former utilize prism or diffraction grating, while the latter the interference of light. If you need to, if you want uh, interest to know more about this uh, kind of interferometer, you can uh, read it in the reference book or just Google it. Okay, this is spectrometer uh, configuration. Spectrometry is a method of spectroscopy, which means that spectrometry is quantifying the amount of energy absorbed by matter and the light that it creates in the process. Essentially, each sub substance will either transmit or absorb light and the frequency by which the substance does this identify what the substance is. Spectrometers measure the frequency emitted by a substance being analyzed, since it clearly is not something that can be measured as easily or as simply as unit of distance or weight. It does have its own unit to determine that frequency. The wavelength of light absorption or trans transmittance is measured based on the wavelength in nanometer. While the unit seems straightforward, a machine is required because the human eye cannot accurately detect the frequency of the absorption or transmittance of such a minuscule length. The spectrometer also provides results on the intensity of light. This requires the, the use of several complex formula to calculate the spectral transmittance of the sample or object being examined. 
Optical detector as the name implied can detect the amount of light received. Our very own eyes are a pair of detectors as they can receive light information with the retina and transmit that light data to our brain. In the visible light spectrum, our eyes are great detectors to inspect fiber break or light leakage. However, most fiber works in the invisible wavelength spectrum where human eyes won't be able to see. That is the where the optical detectors come in. Optical detector convert optical signal into electric signal, does so by generating an electrical current proportional to the intensity of the incident optical light. This is an example of the, uh, the stripe camera. The stripe camera record image by moving uh, film past a fixed slit in the focal plane as the camera is moved forward. So this camera is normally used in mission requiring object height determination. It's used on aircraft based platform uh, such as drone or fixed wing UAV. Okay, this is an example of the panchromatic camera. This is widely used in satellite imagery application. Also, we call this single lens camera. And this is a multi spectral camera. A multi spectral imagery generally refer to 3 to 10 band. Each band has a descriptive title. For example, the channel below include red, red, green, blue, near infrared and short wave infrared. And this is the hyperspectral camera. Uh, hyperspectral imagery consists of much narrower band, 10 to 20 nanometer. A hyperspectral image could have hundreds of thousands of bands. In general, they don't have descriptive channel names. Having a higher level of spectral detail in hyperspectral image give better capability to see the unseen. For example, hyperspectral remote sensing distinguish between three minerals because of its high spectral resolution. But the multispectral Langsat thermatic member could not distinguish between three uh, minerals.